This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. You see, there's two types of people in the world, and if you're one of the ones that's not the other one, you're probably not going to enjoy this. This is Wretched Radio. There are two types of people, for instance, who cook in the kitchen. There is the type of person who, in a desire to get the job done, does not care what sort of mess is made. And so by the time the meal is prepared, it looks like a bomb went off in the kitchen. Contrasted that with the person who cleans as they go because they don't like things to be untidy. If you're the latter, you're not going to enjoy this because this is going to be a bit of a mess. I'm just going to go in the other room for a while. (laughs) Cleaning? Did I... Did I maybe describe a dynamic in your home by any chance, Joey? Just a touch. Okay, I'm going to go with Carla's the neat one. Am I correct? Not when it comes to cooking. <laughs> hey, didn't mean to step on any tootsies there, but but if you if you if you don't like things getting a little bit messy, this is going to be this is going to be a challenge because history is messy. When you read a history book, it's not as neat and tidy as it's presented. And always note, of course, everybody brings something to the historical party. They bring something to their interpretation of events. events. For instance, this is recent history. Write a history. I'm now tasking you. Write a history of the 80s. And you're probably going to bring what? Your political bent? how you felt about the leaders of the day, which in the 80s mostly was Ronald Reagan, so you're probably predisposed to giving him a favorable historical review. You're probably inclined to say things were pretty good, boom in the 80s, and maybe maybe as a Christian you'd go, but wow, an awful lot of consumerism and just, well, unbridled covetousness was exposed. You're going to bring all of that to the party. It's not easy to write history. And so even as we go read a history book, you are not getting anywhere near the whole picture. And we need to remember that as we look back to try to figure out what were those people thinking back then. Kevin DeYoung, I think, has written an article that will help us a little bit. It's not perfect. It is not exhaustive and complete. But it is helpful. The title of the article was With Liberty and Justice for All. What should we think of America? As people are going about the business of tearing down icons, statues of people, some that we could look back at and go, you know, probably not a good idea to have that statue up. Others where it's like, what? Well, no, no, no. We used to think that guy was really groovy. We're tearing him down? The sign of revolution, by the way. Nevertheless, what are we to think of America? Because people are challenging us, and this has been being ta- has been being taught. Mm. Try that again. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. In schools now for decades, America bad, founding fathers evil, the founding sin of our country evil. Kevin DeYoung, helpful. The point is not to exonerate people who did bad in the past but to dispute the telling of American history that reads the worst aspects of Southern slavery into our national story from start to finish. And so what, Ch- what, Chally's, what Kevin DeYoung is encouraging is, hey, don't, don't let people off the hook for their behavior in slavery or their attitude toward people of different skin. We're not going to let them off the hook on this. But, for instance, don't look at the South like the only thing that was happening at that time was slavery. Because certainly there was more going on and there were people going to work and there were people buying homes and there were people planting crops and there were people that were making things, people going bankrupt. Lots of stuff was going on. Not just this. That's not the correct way to read history. In his famous campaign speech on race, then-Senator Barack Obama rejected the profoundly distorted view of this country that sees white racism as endemic and that elevates what is wrong with America above all that we know what is right with America. Don't know who wrote that for him, but that's, that is a correct perspective. We don't, you can't let it slide. You can't let that go. It, it's there. When you read about Jonathan Edwards and his, that, the fact that he owns slaves, you, you've got to reckon, 
he lists he in his documents he writes their names down now one of them got saved at one of his revivals he did educate his slaves and yet he owned slaves you you, you can't it's not an either or and it's not the totality of Jonathan Edwards or of the south or even of people who were racist that is absolutely identifiable and should be noted but not at the exclusion of everything else that was titled a more perfect union from barack obama while america at its worst has been brutally far from perfect that doesn't mean that in our imperfect union there is nothing worth celebrating even when it comes to race if we're not careful We can reinforce racial stereotypes by telling American history as the story of what white people have done to black people in the past and what white people can do to help them in the present, as if that's all there is to the story. It's not. There's just there's there's more to history than this issue. As Shelby Steele argues, blacks have often been rendered a contingent people without personal agency in the story of America. A people first oppressed by whites and now dependent upon the goodwill of whites for their success. Quote, Thus, it relegated us to the sidelines of our own aspirations. Feelings of white guilt should not obscure the fact that as a group, black Americans have made the greatest gains over some of the highest hurdles and in a shorter span of time than any other racial group in history. I mean, when you think about it, they were owned by people. (laughs) Does it get lower on the rung than that? And yet today... So much success. As such, it speaks to the intestinal fortitude of a people. Just as important, it speaks to the greatness of a nation in which such gains were possible. These types of anecdotes, if you want to call them that, where you point to, well, there was a president who, and there's a famous celebrity who, and there's a rich person who. Those things could only happen here. That's not a bad thing. That's actually a good thing, right? The founding documents of this country were based in part on a Judeo-Christian understanding of the fallenness of man. That's why Hamilton believed in checks and balances and why Madison insisted that ambition must be made to counteract ambition. They didn't trust men with too much power. Unfortunately, we have our examples of those in power acting unjustly toward those without power. But that doesn't make the promise of the Declaration that all men are created equal a lie. It makes our national sins... More painful, actually, because we say it in the document, almost a compromised position because it was being tussled at the signing of the Declaration of Independence. What do we do with the slave issue? And there were men who were definitely opposed to it, those who were, of course, in favor of it. That was the line that was left in, not without debate. And yet, another hundred years go by before we deal with it. From Kevin DeYoung, we do not have to believe we are as bad as we've ever been to acknowledge that we aren't what we can be. There has been racial progress in this country that few whites or blacks would have imagined 60 years ago. Yet, there's still racism. There's still injustice. Yes, there are self-deceptions in every human heart, but there are also declarations in our history that can still inspire The ideals of liberty and justice for all are not less noble or less indicative of the American story because we've so often failed to live up to them. Boy, this is balanced, isn't it? This doesn't resolve everything neat and tidy. Oh, it's all clean and clear. Okay, march on. No, it's a bit of a mess still. But at least it's a balanced mess, he concludes. The genius of Lincoln and MLK is that they appealed to the best of America instead of the worst. They understood that a relentless focus on America's original sin without a surpassing hope in America's original ideals would not move any of us closer to the better angels of our nature or to the dream of being judged by the content of our character instead of the color of our skin. Shame can arouse the conscience, but for the long haul, people need better motivation than disgust and despair. A people cannot long endure without some sense of shared identity and purpose. That's a big issue right now. Some sense of mutual striving together. Some sense of an idea that defines them. In other words, a culture. Being an American must mean something. 
It must, there, there's got to be something that binds a people together or you have got yourself anarchy and chaos. De Young says, I still think we hold these truths and we the people can be that something. Now, of course, from a Christian perspective, we know what the solution is, but for a nation of mostly unbelievers, if there's not a culture with ideals to which we adhere, even as we fail them, then you will not have a culture. And if we do not have a correct understanding of history, how messy it is, even while people said one thing, they regularly did another, we won't have a past, we won't have a history, we won't have a society, and we most certainly will not have a future. Did that resolve all the disparities and all the confusion? No. But at least it's an honest way for Christians to discuss history. There's some ugly, there's some beauty, there are both. But you don't throw out the baby with the American bathwater. Not bad for a Presbyterian, Joey. Until tomorrow, <laughs> go serve your king. Do, 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 do. Thank you for calling technical support. This is Todd Friel, the wretch. The song refers to, could I possibly put you on hold for a moment? Todd, we have talked about this. You cannot answer the phone this way. Right ho. Thank you for calling technical support. This is Todd Friel, the wretch. The song refers to. <laughs>